Welcome viewers. In this video we are going to do design of substation candy foundation using hero code. This is a stage 4 out of 7. In this we are going to do anger bolt design. So these are the various design stages. We have seen already these first three stages. Overview of calculation, foundation and soil parameter loads and load combinations. Stability check. And in this stage, we are going to look anger bolt design. In upcoming video, we are going to look design of bottom pad in fifth stage, punching and one-way shear, and design of pedestal in sixth and seventh stages. So here is a Excel calculation sheet to demonstrate the design of anger bolt. On the screen, you can see that. So first, we will do the sample calculation, which will explain how to do this calculation. And later, after understanding this, we can make a summary for all the load combinations which is required to satisfy the anger bolt design. So first one is anger bolt specification we need to define in that we can consider number of anger bolt as four numbers per leg. Diameter of anger bolt we can consider as M30 which is mentioned as D. So there are also other list of diameter which is here. So this after that we need to find out the grass area of the bolt. It is nothing but by D square by 4. Next one is the stress area of the bolt. This stress area of the bolt will be the reduced area from the grass area of the bolt. So this generally used to get from the bolt manufacturer or there are some standard which are available to state this stress area. So from that these stress areas for the various diameter of the bolt is listed here. So once after the selecting this from the drop down list, so this stress area and the grass area will be very so now we can assume as a 30 mm as a diameter of the bolt so that the stress area of the bolt is 561 square mm. So on the other hand you can also calculate generally this used to have some 70 to 80 percent of the variations that is reduction in the total grass area this is this area. So if the manufacturer detail is not available for the stress area then we can consider as 70% of the grass area. Next one is a grade of bolt. So this grade of bolt there are three categories B500A, B500B, B500NC. B500A is generally we used for normal scenario of anchor bolt and B500 is a special conditions and B500NC is a type where there is a seismic heavy seismic impact is exposed then we need to provide this B500 NC. So all this to be referred from the standard BS4449 and NS3576 part 3. So these are the standard values which we can extract from these standards. So these are the British standards and here ultimate tensile strength also we can able to get from this standard. So these are the values 527 for B500A and 540 megapascal. So likewise, so this values of ultimate tensile strength of the bolt FEB we can extract from this table by applying the VLOOKUP. Then we need to define the plate specification. So here plate thickness we can assume as a 40 mm of the per leg and the grade of the steel is S355 we can assume there are also other grades S235 and S275 and ultimate tensile strength of the steel we can able to get from the code 10025 of European standard part 2 so accordingly the yield strength are defined there in that code so for thickness which are lesser equal to 16 mm then we need to consider this so likewise there is some definition are given in the table 7 so we used we need to consider according to this so this ultimate tensile strength is 470 mega pascal for the thickness more than 16 mm so here for ultimate it should be For S355 it is 470. So that's what consider here. And the whole diameter of 
for anger bolt generally we used to have some 60 mm extra to the diameter of the bolt for the hole it should be more than 6 mm so d in 0 is a representations for this hole diameter and the edge distance of anger bolt e1 or e2 it means both the direction x and y direction we can consider 1.2 times the diameter of the hole so that is what it is rounded off to 50 actually it is coming 43.2 and we can round it off to 50 mm and the next one is we need to find out the spacing between the anger bolts so this spacing we can consider as per actual or as per the European standard it should be 2.2 times the hole diameter so our hole diameter is 36 and multiplied with the 2.2 we are getting 79.2 so we are making as a round off to that or nearby round off as a 100 mm so these are the parameters we need to define for both anger bolt and base plate specifications next we need to find out the bold bearing capacity or bold capacity in tension shear and bearing resistance so how to find that let me see so first we need the information from the partial safety factor so this is as per code en 50341 part 1 as per class 7.3.5.1 so let me look into that so on the screen you can see the code 50341 and we need to refer page 104 for this so here you can see resistant of connections so it is stating for bold gamma m2 is 1.25 so this factor we have considered here 1.25 so next one is we need to calculate all the bold capacity as per the table 3.4 of EN 1993 part 1 section 8. So for that we need to refer the page 29 of EN 1993 part 1 section 8. So here is the table on the screen you can see. So first we need to we can check that tension resistance formula so it is k2 divided by fub into sorry k2 fub as divided by gamma m2 so here k2 we can consider as 0.9 so likewise in the calculation you can see that the tension capacity of the bolt is k2 fub into as gamma m2 so so this is the equation we have considered So here 0 0.9 is a K2 and FUB is a ultimate tensile strength of bolt which is 525 mega Pascal that multiplied by AS is a stress area 561 square mm divided by gamma M2 so the tensile capacity of the bold FTRD is 212.05 kN similar like for shear resistance we need to refer per shear plane so for that you can find the equation alpha V FUB A divided by gamma M2 so here alpha V we can consider 0 0.5 for classes 4.8, 5.8, 6.8 here our class is similar to this 5.8 so we can consider 0 0.5 so you can see here that uh, yield strength which is coming 500 for our type of bolt so it means our case is similar like 8.8 .8, sorry 6.8 So how we can we need to find out is 
six point eight is nothing but six hundred is a ultimate uh, tensile state. In that, if you are multiplying by the point eight, it will be four hundred and eighty, which is nearer to five hundred. So the yield strength of bolt for six point eight is 480 mega pascal but our yield strength for the b 500a is 500 mega pascal which is nearly equal to 6.8 so we can consider 0.5 here so now we are applying this values 0.5 as alpha v into fub we already know it is 525 into area so here we need to consider the grass area because as per the equation it is mentioned a a is a grass area so we are multiplying 707 square mm with that and divided by the gamma m2 we are getting 148 kN so next coming to the bearing resistance for the bolt so this is a formula for that k1 alpha b f u d t divided by gamma m2 so this formula also listed here you can see here k1 alpha b f u t d divided by gamma 2 so it is in the en 1993 part 1 section 8 also so here the explanation is provided how to find the alpha b alpha b is the smallest of ad f u b by f u r 1 so you can see here ad equal to so ad formula also given here so ad equal to e1 divided by 3 do for end bolts so this we need to consider so by calculating this e1 divided by 3 do so we already know that e1 equal to 50 mm that divided by 3 into do is a 36 mm so we are getting 0.46 and for the alpha b next case is f u b divided by f u so we are applying that f u b is a ultimate tensile strength of bolt here it is 525 divided by ultimate tensile strength of structural steel 470 so which is 1.15 another case to find the alpha b is 1 so the least of these three we need to consider so we are considering the minimum of that is least of all these three is 0.46 so alpha b we find out then next we need to find out the k1 factor so for the k1 factor it is given here in the code K1 is the smallest of 2.8 e2 divided by do minus 1.7 r 1.4 times the p2 divided by do minus 1.5 r 2.5. So all this cre these three cases we are applying here 2.8 into e2 e2 and e1 are same. So e1 e2 is 50 2.8 into 50 divided by do is 36 mm. Minus 1.7, we are getting 2.19. Similar like for the next case, as per the code is P1 divided by. Sorry, here P2 divided by DO into 1.5 divided by. Sorry, minus 1.4. So this formula also we are applying 1.4 times the P2 is 100 divided by DO minus 1.7. we are getting 2.19 and the third case to find out the k1 factor is 2.5 so it should be least of all the three so it is 2.19 so we have find out the k1 factor alpha b and what is fu fu is ultimate tensile strength of structural steel which is already we defined in the plate specification that is 470 mega pascal and d is the diameter of the bolt which is 30 and t is the thickness of the plate which is 40 applying all the values in these equations 
we are getting bearing resistance as 454.53 kN. So the bold capacity now we have calculated. Next we can move on the various actual loads. So we know the we know that the load case is 31. We are considering here. So we will be considering all the ULS cases here. So 31 load cases. You can see here. This we already discussed in our second stage videos. So these are the load combination list for ultimate limit states. So first we will consider the first load case 31. So maximum compression load we can extract from this table. This is 291. So similar like for tension and for resistant uh, resultant shear. So all these three value we are extracting from the second stage of video which we had already released. So in that we, uh, we have discussed about the various loads and load combinations. So from that uh, value we have extracted. Now we need to find out the tension on each bolt. So tension on each bolt is nothing but this value is for the entire four bolt component which is for one leg. So one leg we are assume as a four bolts. So that this tension force per leg divided by the number of bolts we are getting per leg actual tension. Similar like for shear also we need to apply the same procedure. So uh, resultant shear divided by the four number of bolts which we assumed. And for compression also we need to consider this uh, maximum compression per leg divided by the number of bolts. So we will be getting all the three forces tension, shear and compression per leg sorry per number of bolts. So next we need to do the check for combined shear and tension. So to calculate this check for combined shear and tension we need to check we need to find the same table which is showing in the right hand side. So in that table 3.1 3.4 sorry 3.4 that combined shear and tension you can see in the bottom that FEED divided by FERD plus FTED divided by 1.4 times the FTRD which which are should be less than or equal to 1. So the same equation we are having here. So here FEED is at 10.81 and F shear resistant FERD is a 148.4. So that are FED divided by the FRD plus FTED is a 61 divided by 1.4 times the 212 which is a tension capacity FTRD. So by applying the values to the equation we are getting 28% as the utilization value. So this is safe in check for, for combined shear and tension. Next we can we need to find out the anchoring length for the bolt. So for that we need to refer class 8.4.3 of EN 1992 part 1 section 1. So this is in the right hand side you can see the code EN 1992 part 1 section 1. So here we need to find out the tensile strength of the bolt first. So we already find the tension of each bolt by calculating by dividing the number of bolt to the tension per leg. So which is 61.75. Now the design strength of the bolt we need to calculate from the same. So it is nothing but that FTED divided by area. Area is the grass area of the bolt 707. So by applying these values to the equation FTED by A, it is 87.37 megapascal is the design strength of the bolt. Now we need to find out the ultimate bond strength in concrete. So for that this is the equation FBD equal to 2.25 Nita N Nita 1 into Nita 
टू इंटू एफ सी डी डी सो दिस इक्वेशन वी कैन फाइंड आउट इन क्लास एट पॉइंट फोर पॉइंट टू ऑफ ई एन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी टू पार्ट वन सो हियर द पेज नंबर हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी फाइव वी नीड टू रेफर सो हियर इज द इक्वेशन विच इज गिवन हियर 2.25 पॉइंट टू फाइव नीटा वन नीटा टू एफ सी डी डी सो हियर दैट एफ सी डी डी डेफिनेशन इज गिवन सो विच इज इन थ्री पॉइंट वन पॉइंट सिक्स यू नीड टू रेफर द क्लास एंड नीटा वन इट इज डिफाइंड फॉर गुड कंडीशन वी कैन हैव द नीटा वन वैल्यू एस वन सो वी हैव अचीव्ड हियर इन द एक्सएल शीट एस अ वन एंड द नीटा टू यू नीड टू कैलकुलेट विथ इफ द केस diameter of the bolt is less than or equal to 32 mm then we can directly consider one if it is greater than 32 mm then this is a equation 132 minus diameter of the bolt divided by 100 is the value we need to find out but our case we have assumed 30 mm is the anchor bolt which is less than the 32 so we can directly consider as a one nita to as also one But anyway, we have make as a equation like if it is less than 32, then it should one. So it is one for us. Now we need to find out the F C T D. So for that we need to refer class 3.1.6, page number 36 of E N 1992. So here you can see that F C D. is a design compressive stress which can be calculated as alpha cc fck divided by gamma c now this is the equation here so fcdd equal to alpha ct into fctk 0.05 that is 5 percent fractile divided by gamma c so the gamma c value can be get from class 2.4.2.4 and alpha ct value so here it is given the value of alpha ct for use in a country may be found its National annexer. The recommended value is one, so we can consider one as alpha C T value, and then we need to find out only the two things. One is F C T K at five percent fractal divided by gamma C. So this gamma C value also we need to find out. The gamma C value we can find out in table two point one, which is in page thirty six of E N nineteen ninety two part one. so here in the table you can see in the right hand side table 2.1 n for a persistent and transient conditions gamma c of concrete is 1.5 this accidental anyway we are not going to consider because as per european standard that the short circuit force is not uh, no need to consider so this we can ignore so only gamma c of concrete 1.5 we need to consider so that's what we consider here 1.5 so now we need to find out that fctk 5% fractile so for that we need to refer table 3.1 which is in page 31 in en 1992 part 1 section 1 so here you can see that the table 3.1 so here we need to find out the fctk 0.05 so it is here this is the fctk 0.05 so moving to the right side of the table you can see that the equation to find out the value 0.7 times fctm so the same formula we are applying here so now so this equation we need to find out and 
FCTM will vary according to the grade of the concrete. So already we had assumed our grade of concrete in foundation and soil parameters is C30, 37. You can see here that is steel grade. So this we already discussed in our stage 2 of the video. So we are already assumed as a C30, 37. So accordingly to that, if you refer to this table, we need to find out the FCTM value. So here that FCTM value is defined for various grade. So for C12, 15, it is 1.6 and 1.9 followed by 16, 20, 25. So likewise, these are listed out here. So according to our grade, it is C30 by 37. So the FCTM value is 2.9. So that the 2.9 is multiplied by 0 0.7, which is 0 2.03 megapascal. So this is what directly taken from the table. So on the other hand, we can direct also directly take this value FCTK 0 0.07 for 30 grade it is 2. So we can directly take this value here instead of calculating this equation as it is mentioned in the table 3.1. Now finally we need to find out the ultimate bond stress in concrete so which is 2.25 Nita to the same equation. So we are just multiplying this uh, 2.25 into 1, Nita 1, Nita 2 is uh, both are 1, multiply with the FCTD 1.35. So this FTTD we already calculated like alpha CT into uh, gamma alpha CT into 2.03 as a FCT 5% fractal divided by gamma C is a 1.5. So likewise this ultimate bond stress in concrete to be calculated. Now we need to calculate the length of the bold uh, inside the concrete which is required to hold the tension from the structure. So for that basic anchorage length uh, of the bold we need to calculate. So this equation we can find out in class 8.4.3 of EN 1991 for that page 136 we need to refer. So here is the equation in 8.4.3 uh, LB required equal to 5 by 4 sigma ST divided by FPT. So the same equation we are following here in that Excel. So applying these values. So phi is nothing but the diameter of the bolt 30. Applying 30 divided by 4 into Sigma ST is a design strength of the bolt divided by FPD we already calculated just now ultimate bond stress of the concrete. So applying all the values we are getting 216 mm for this load case 31. Now finally we need to do the compression check also sometimes if the anchor bolt is placed inside the concrete and after that stru the structure is placed if the after casting is not happen then we need to do this check for compression also if the construction is done once after construction is done the erection of the tower is done if the after casting below the base plate have been done then this check is not required the compression is not required because the entire anchor bolt compression will be taken care by the after cast concreting or the pedestal because there won't be any gap between the base plate and to the pedestal. So all the force, all the compression force will transfer to the concrete. But in case, in some of the cases, the after casting is not happened for the transmission light tower and the substation tower. So in that case, the check for compression also should be included. So this is nothing but we already calculate the compression on each bolt, which is uh, the number of bolt we divided from the compressive load of the lug. So that we need to divide it with the capacity bearing resistant of the bolt. 
so it is giving only 16% of the utilization hence this is safe so now we need to list out all the load combination here so 31 to 36 is a with the deviation sorry without deviation the conductor without deviation and conductor with deviation are the 41 to 46 load combination cases so all these cases uh, we are directly linking from this stage 2 videos so all the forces H sorry uh, compression tension and uh, resultant shear we are directly linking here and FCT actual is nothing but the compression force divided by the number of bolts which we assumed as a 4 number so for all the cases we need to do the same method and for tension carrying capacity per bolt tension sorry actual tension applied per bolt is nothing but the tension per leg divided by the number of bolts which we assumed as a 4 so same way for the, all the cases we need to apply and for shear also the same procedure total shear from the leg divided by the 4 number of poles and check for shear comp uh, check for shear and combined shear and tension we already discussed this in this equation so the same equation we are applying here and getting the utilization as a 28% 34, 35, 37, 43, 45 so in this case the maximum is 45 that is conductor without deviation and for conductor with deviation cases it is 56 so maximum utilization is 56 percent similarly so next step is uh, FTED by A so this design strength of the bolt also will vary according to the external force from the structure so that's why this is listed in here in a separate column as per the load cases so that equation is nothing but it is a FTED is a leg sorry per anger bolt tension divided by the area gas area of the bolt so which already discussed in that sample calculation under this line and the next one is anger bolt length so this is a required anger bolt length which we had discussed in this entire lines so this is a basic anger length 216 for case number 31 and the load combination number other load combinations also it is varying 278 the, this equation this value is calculated similar like this procedure which we have seen just and the without deviation the maximum is 373 and overall with including the with deviation the maximum length record is 461 next as if there is no after casting then we need to also check that check for compression also required so we can assume for the worst case there won't be any after casting after casting concrete below the base plate so that the anger bolt will subject to compression load also so that all also we need to check like we discussed in this sample calculation so finally for that maximum utilization is a 32 percent now this is a summary descriptions we need to provide hence provide four numbers of 30 mm diameter bold with the required embedded length of minimum 470 so we know that maximum length is 461 so we are required is minimum 70 mm in into that we are adding some 150 mm so at least the total length of the bolt should be three sorry 620 mm in that 470 mm should be embedded inside the concrete so this is the final design statement for the anger bolt so with this we can end this anger bolt design thank you look description for more related videos subscribe to this channel for more updates thank you